Good morning. It's good to be with you on this uh, wonderful Monday. It's great to be back together after a great weekend um, to study God's Word together. Today we're going to be picking up with uh, Acts chapter 24. We're going to be finishing chapter 24 um, today, verses 24 through 27. So Acts 24, uh, 24 through 37. I'm sorry, 24 through 27. We read this here. Some days later when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him speak concerning faith in Christ Jesus. As he discussed justice, self-control, and the coming judgment, Felix became frightened and said, Go away from the, for, for the present. When I have an opportunity, I will send for you. At the same time, he hoped that money would be given to him by Paul. And for that reason, he used to send for him very often to converse with him. After two years had passed, Felix was to see about Porcius Festus. Since he wanted to grant the Jews a favor, Felix left Paul in prison. So we see, um, we see Paul continuing. You know, uh, last week we talked, we saw Paul defending himself in Felix's um, chambers in his his palace. Uh, he was uh, Paul was um, was um, charged by the religious leaders. Um, the, the religious leaders made these accusations against Paul, and then Paul defended himself. And he basically, Paul said, it's about the resurrection. This is all comes down to the resurrection. So that's where we left off last week. Now we see after uh, after Paul's um, defense, we see now that Felix um, is keeping Paul there. Um, it almost kind of reminds me of um, Herod with John the Baptist. If you remember that story from the Gospels? Where um, Herod had John the Baptist in um in prison, and Herod liked to hear John the Baptist preach, but uh, Herod's wife, who um, um, John was condemning Herod and Herod's wife and and Herod and their relationship, uh, wanted John killed. So um, a little different here. It seems as though Drusilla, um, Felix's wife, has a fairly well understanding of who Paul was and all this is. And this is even that Felix liked to hear Paul preach. Of course, uh, <laughs> it says he wanted a bribe. Verse 26, at the same time, he hoped that money would be given to him by Paul. Um, so, you know, he wanted, uh, as uh, Hyman Roth said, uh, or not Hyman Roth, as, as, as one of the Godfather characters said, just he wanted to wet his beak a little bit, shall we say. So he wanted uh, a little bit of cash flow to um, help his problems but it seems as though that felix was um intrigued by paul and that's a common thing you're going to see here is that when paul speaks to these roman leaders you see them being intrigued by what paul is saying so um verse 25 is that as he discussed justice self-control and the coming judgment felix became frightened and said go away for the present when I have an opportunity, I will send for you. So I think two things are interesting there. Look, look at what Paul is, is talking about. Uh, justice, self-control, and the coming judgment. That's some interesting topics. Uh, you know, um, justice, living life the just way. Um, justice is a big deal in the Bible. Go back and read the prophets. When we read the prophets in the Old Testament, we often associate what the prophets are doing as more uh, future telling, and, and that is part of what the prophets do. They do foresee and foretell the future, but that's not all the prophets do. Most, in fact, we're going to be honest when we look at the prophets. Most of what they do is speaking more to the reality in that moment than it is speaking to the future. So they're speaking about justice, how the religious, how the Jews treated uh, the poor. Uh, the widows, the orphans in their context. So we see that um, a lot of what the prophets did was really more focused on how they lived out the gospel, lived out the the covenant, if you will, with the people of their day, where Paul is speaking to how, as Christians, we're called to live out the gospel in our life. We pray every Sunday, y'all, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we're, we're called to live that out. So justice, uh, self-control. Ooh, self-control, y'all. One of the tweets I saw several years back that stuck with me throughout all the, all the time is um, somebody wrote and said, uh, if, um, huh, if we looked at the world today, you would seem to think that self-expression, not self-control, is a fruit of the Spirit. Uh, self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. When we have the Spirit of God living within us and living through us, we live self-controlled lives. So um, self-control is a big deal. In the Roman world, 
they didn't always dictate a lot of self-control. Um, you know, they had uh, lots of lives of excess, especially the religion, particularly the, the, the political leaders. They had lives of excess. And then the second coming um, or the coming judgment um, that the Lord would return uh, and make all things right. Uh, the Lord will return and, and bring judgment. Um, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Uh, the Lord will come and make things right. And so everything Paul's saying is going to call Felix and call all of us to live our life differently. We talked last week a little bit about, uh, about how there's a comfort that we get associated with in life. And Paul's calling them out of that comfort and to be, faith, to be faithful. And we see here, Felix became frightened. Notice how often in Scripture... When confronted with what God expects of us, people get afraid. One of my favorite scenes in all the Bible is when Jesus, um, remember the story in the Gospels where Jesus cast the demons out of the man. They go into the pig and the pig jump off in the Sea of Galilee. Um, and when um, and when the people of the town come out to see the demoniac healed in his right mind, their reaction is, well, leave. No, you got to go. You got to go. We all think we'd welcome Jesus, wouldn't we? I do. You do. There's a, golly, an old country song by Colin Ray. I don't know how many, how many of y'all remember Colin Ray, 90s country singer. He, he always had a song that I liked called, um, and he talked about how, what if, what if Jesus came back in a way we wouldn't expect him to come back? And the, the chorus says, will we take him in or will we turn our back? Um, Felix is confronted by Paul with the expectations of the gospel to live a life of justice to live a life of self-control to, to live a life looking for the coming judgment and Felix is like no uh -uh, this scares me I don't want this I don't want this The, the Bible talks of the fear of the Lord being the beginning of all wisdom. I don't think that God's calling us to be afraid of him like we're afraid of the dark or afraid of the monsters or afraid of whatever. But I do think the Bible's calling us to have a proper reverence and proper respect for who God is. A proper respect and a proper reverence for the way of Jesus. There's that great line from um, in the, in the line The Witch in the Wardrobe where the one of the children is walking with Aslan towards the end of the story. And others are watching the two of these, Aslan and the child, have a conversation. And somebody asks, is he safe? Of course, Aslan is the Christ figure. And the other person says, oh, certainly not, dear child. He's a lion. He is not safe, but he is good. And I think that's what we see here from Paul's preaching to Felix. Is Jesus safe? Well, certainly not. But he is good. He is good. Felix hears this and he's frightened and he sends him away. No, he still wants a bribe. So he, I guess he's not that scared. <laughs> he still was like a bribe. But he understands that. I, I think it's important, y'all. I think it's important that we never lose our proper reverence for God. We, we want Jesus to be our friend. And we want Jesus to be welcoming and hospitable to us. But we need to also know who he is, that he's the that He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. And that as we even see here, he's going to come back in final judgment. So he's good. But he's not always going to leave us. And in fact, he will never leave us as we are. And he will often ask us to do things that look incredibly hard. Felix saw 
some of the hard demands of the gospel. And it scared him. It may scare you too today, friends. Hearing these demands of the gospel may scare you. And that's where we need to know that he is good. And that Jesus will never call us to anything that he will not give us the strength to complete. He will not call us to anything or anywhere that he will not go with us. So today, know that even if it looks scary, he goes with us. And he will never leave nor forsake us. So uh, we'll pick up tomorrow with uh, chapter 25. Once again, we're getting closer, y'all. In my Bible, we only got about three or four more pages left. So we're going to get there before you know it. Hey, thanks for being with us today. Hope you have a great rest of your day.